naggers, of course. Naggers. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for those times when South Park gave us both something to ponder and to laugh at. That didn't sound serial at all. Number 30. Artificial Intelligence Artificial intelligence has existed in various forms for several years, but with the release of tools like ChatGPT, the use of AI has grown exponentially. This is a real app. It'll completely change your life, bro. South Park did an entire episode around the boys making use of AI in both their personal relationships and school assignments. Much of what is going on is quite entertaining, but it does manage to provide some social commentary around the use of AI in our lives. Even more so, when the credits roll, we see that Trey Parker shares a writing credit with ChatGPT. To see the show embrace AI that way is interesting, to say the least. Dude, how did you pull all that off? ChatGPT, dude. Number 29. Diversity in Media <laughs> Oh my god! Please! No! No! Few would argue against the fact that, for a long time, various minority and ethnic groups did not see much valuable representation in film and television. In recent years, there's been a big push to change this. However, according to South Park, there's a fine line between diversity in media and pandering. That's actually the best explanation I've heard as to why Disney movies all suck now. Joining the Panderverse was a direct attack on some of the measures that film studios have taken, such as rebooting properties with more diverse casts instead of telling new stories that naturally include a diverse set of characters. The episode features an all-female, non-Caucasian version of the four main characters to drive their argument home. Number 28. Corporate Takeovers A common complaint among small communities is how larger corporations come in and seemingly push the smaller businesses out. General stores, corner coffee shops, and even local grocers find themselves bankrupt when townsfolk choose the big box stores over the smaller gems. South Park has tackled this subject several times. What do you have to say about that? I need coffee! Both the episodes Gnomes and Something Walmart This Way Comes find humorous ways of illustrating this conundrum. Jesus, look at us. We all don't like the Walmart, but we can't stop coming here. It's like some mystical evil force. By showing Tweak's father's acceptance of Harbucks, or how Jim's drugs itself became a huge success, the show subverts expectations and ends up fighting for and not against capitalism. Number 27. Social Isolation If the internet has given us anything, it's been a means for people to connect with others in ways we never anticipated. Human beings are social creatures who need to interact with others around us. Prior to social media, awkward kids like Kip Drorty may not have ever had a way to connect with others. His Facebook friendship with Kyle shows how positive any kind of human connection can really be. Yet at the same time, it also gives us a peek at how quickly one can become isolated when your whole social existence relies on online friends and followers. The episode You Have Zero Friends makes the point that, while the way we interact has changed, true friendships go far beyond just a number on a screen. Friends shouldn't be some kind of commodity for a person's status! Number 26. Anti-Semitism Kyle, what on earth has gotten into you? I saw The Passion! Oh, that no. movie again! The Passion! Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ was a divisive film among viewers for both its religious connotation and its portrayal of Jewish people. Eric Cartman saw the movie as a confirmation of his long-standing anti-Semitism. Even Kyle starts to doubt his own faith and the message behind being Jewish when he sees the film. Much of the plot focuses on a caricature of Gibson and his outlandish behavior. Yet despite his Klingon battle chants and requests for torture, we as the audience are still exposed to an underlying theme that emphasizes how Jewish people are perceived by some in society as well as a sharp criticism of Mel Gibson's movie. Number 25. Accepting Other Religious Beliefs Any true South Park fan will know of Matt and Trey's fascination with the Mormon faith. Long before their Broadway musical, the two gave us the episode all about Mormons, which dove into much of the minutia of what Mormonism really is. Joseph Smith was called a prophet, dum 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 dum. The brilliance of this episode is how it shows us that even when the true origins of a religion are unearthed, it's ultimately the actions people take that matter. Gary makes it clear that even if everything he believes is a lie, it doesn't matter because he owes a debt to his church for having such a wonderful life. The episode leaves us with the thought that while religion might appear peculiar, it can help you have a happier life. And maybe there's nothing wrong with that. The truth is, I don't care if Joseph Smith made it all up. Because what the church teaches now is loving your family, being nice, and helping people. Number 24. Gay Marriage In the episode Follow That Egg, Garrison becomes enraged with jealousy upon finding out that Mr. Slave is marrying Big Gay Al. Married? 
That jealousy pushes Garrison to try to block a new bill that would allow gay marriage in the state of Colorado. This episode aired in 2005, 10 years before the landmark Supreme Court case of Obergefell v. Hodges saw to the legalization of same-sex marriage across the United States. But it's still a sharp satire of the real-world issues the U.S. was facing then and now. South Park shows us that love knows no bounds. Number 23. Heartbreak Raisins shows both Stan and Butters approaching heartbreak in entirely different ways. While most of us can probably relate to Stan's depressive attitude and his choice to dwell in sorrow when Wendy dumps him, it's Butters' speech at the end we should all take note of. Despite having lost the love of his life, Butters has no desire to circle the drain of misery. Instead, he reminds both Stan and all of us that heartbreak can be a beautiful sadness. We only confront the lows of heartbreak because we once experienced the highs of being in love. Life is a balance of ups and downs, and Little Butters has already learned that. Maybe we should all take a page out of his book. So I have to take the bad with the good. So I guess what I'm feeling is like a beautiful sadness. I guess that sounds stupid. Yeah. No. No, Butters, that doesn't sound stupid at all. Number 22. Political Correctness So please welcome PC Principal. Call it politically correct, wokeism, or whatever term you want, South Park has always stood firm about the kind of comedy it represents. Season 19 introduced us to a new character named PC Principal. Given how the show has mocked so many religions, ethnicities, and countless other individuals, the introduction of this guy was a way to comedically comment on PC culture. Like it or not, PC is back and it's bigger than ever. Woo, woo, woo. Whereas people in real life can sometimes be shamed for, say, not using the proper pronouns or engaging in stereotypes. Types. PC Principal often takes to shouting matches and even physical violence, all in the name of being PC. Number 21. Starving Children in Ethiopia even as early as season one, South Park was addressing issues rarely explored in the TV animation landscape. This Thanksgiving special sees the boys befriend an Ethiopian boy, Cartman dubs Starvin Marvin, who is mistakenly delivered to America. Maybe they took it literally when we said we wanted to adopt a kid. While much of the episode is dedicated to making fun of Sally Struthers, which admittedly has not aged great, it does explore an issue that hasn't lost relevance. The indifference and obliviousness many first world nations have towards the less fortunate. This is naturally epitomized through the insensitive Cartman, who is given just a small taste of what Marvin has experienced upon being sent to Ethiopia in his place. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry I mocked poor people. I'm sorry I wasn't more sensitive. Please. Please, God. <laughs> Marvin may not find the compassion he deserves on Earth, but he does find it on planet Marklar in Season 3. Number 20. George Zimmerman in 2013, George Zimmerman was found not guilty for his involvement in the death of Trayvon Martin, a 17-year-old African-American. The verdict enraged many around the country and remains contested even years later. In a World War Z parody, Cartman fears how Token will react. Token, we had nothing to do with it! I know you're pissed off, Token, but be reasonable! It's Cartman who ends up taking extreme measures, though, all while making the situation about himself. This results in Cartman getting shot by Zimmerman, which isn't treated as a punishable offense until the authorities realize the victim is white. Wait, what? Guilty! There's a lot of gray territory in the Stand Your Ground law. Watching this episode, we see how it's often treated as a one-way street. While Cartman learns nothing, the audience can identify with the episode's representation of a flawed justice system. Number 19. Self and Body Image it's what's on the inside that matters most, and we're all beautiful in our own way. This is a message we often hear, but people don't always live by it. Wendy, why is it such a big deal? Because people should be okay with the way they look! When every girl in school receives a new photoshopped look, Wendy takes a stand against how the media portrays physical attractiveness. In a more conventional show, Wendy would teach everyone a valuable lesson about body and self-image. That's Lisa Boogoo! Do you see what I'm talking about? She's pretty! That's how people like Kim Kardashian destroy the self-image of little girls everywhere! Instead, she ultimately accepts the notice that Photoshop gives some people confidence. The ending is one of the show's saddest, as Wendy conforms and Photoshops an image of herself. Wendy struggles to hold back her tears as she betrays her ethics, leaving us all to contemplate what we'd do in her position. Number 18. HIV AIDS South Park has never shied away from satirizing HIV, but two episodes in particular address it head-on. In a season six episode that kind of predicted the future, the world turns on Jared Fogel. 
not because of what Jared later pled guilty to in real life, but due to a miscommunication. It wasn't just Subway sandwiches that made me thin. Uh huh? The reason I was able to lose so much weight so quickly was that I got AIDS. While everyone decides that they can finally laugh about the illness, Kyle sees no humor in the situation when Cartman purposely gives him AIDS six seasons later. Why do I have HIV? Oh, you have HIV, huh, Cal? Guess it isn't so funny now, is it? The episode offers good news and bad news. The good news is that AIDS is much easier to manage than it was in the 80s and 90s. The bad news is that many carriers still don't have the resources or funds needed to combat the disease. Number 17, alcohol use disorder. License and registration, please. What seems to be the officer problem? Even for South Park, Bloody Mary proved to be a controversial episode primarily due to a running gag involving a Virgin Mary statue. The episode is mainly about alcohol, though, and its power over people. Upon receiving a DUI, Randy decides to simply drink less. However, when Randy is led to believe that he has no power concerning his drinking or the reckless actions that stem from it, he goes into a downward spiral. While the episode's portrayal of AA is sure to divide some, Stan does teach Randy a valuable lesson about moderation. Randy finds the willpower to stop after a couple of beers, showing growth and discipline. Of course, this doesn't prevent Randy from drinking too much in various episodes that follow. Obama, you're so bad, you're so bad, you blow my man. Hey, Obama! Obama. Number 16, Piracy in the Indian Ocean. Jack Sparrow makes the life of a pirate seem like nothing but fun and games. So when Cartman and several others learn about the piracy taking place in the Indian Ocean, they set a course for Somalia. Leaving school and parents behind, they anticipate nothing but smooth sailing and treasure hunts on the horizon. Upon arriving, however, the kids quickly find that being a pirate isn't as glamorous as it sounds. All right, goddammit, really, you guys? What kind of pirates are you? Look at yourselves! You're a disgrace to Blackbeard! That doesn't stop Cartman from trying to make his childish fantasy a reality. Aside from addressing pirate hijacking, which was especially timely in 2009, the episode encourages the more fortunate to not take their dull, boring lives for granted. Butters and Ike in particular learn the true meaning of first world problems. Oh my god. Jeez, guess we kinda got put in our place, huh, Ike? I feel like an asshole. Yeah. Me too. Number 15, The Washington Redskins. You guys, I've got it! What? It's the greatest startup company name ever! What? Tell us! Washington Redskins. For decades, the Washington Redskins name and logo ignited no shortage of controversy. By 2014, many seemed to agree that the football team's trademark was insensitive to Native Americans. Nevertheless, owner Daniel Snyder refused to budge on the subject. The 18th season of South Park aired around the same time that the football team was in jeopardy of losing its trademark. When Cartman snatches up the trademark, Snyder isn't at all pleased. Look, don't you see that when you call your organization the Washington Redskins, it's offensive to us? How is it offensive? How is it offensive, Jesus? Bringing out the irony in hypocrisy, Snyder is offended that Cartman is making a mockery of the name and using it for his own gain. In real life, the team didn't lose this trademark, but the name change process was finally initiated in 2020 during the early George Floyd protests. Number 14, being gay. As far as we've come with the perceptions of same-sex relationships, we still have a long way to go. South Park was far ahead of the game when it aired an episode about being gay back in September of 1997. Who cares if your dog is gay? Stan's dog runs away when he overhears his owner's disdain against the gay community. Yet, after meeting Big Gay Al and seeing his farm of animals, Stan is able to accept his dog for who he really is. I'm sorry I tried to change you, Spark. I just didn't understand. It's an early entry for this show that showcases both bigotry and acceptance, all within a 22-minute story. If only the real world were so easy. Number 13, voting and social pressure. Paralleling the 2004 U.S. presidential election, South Park Elementary is given two options for their new mascot, a giant douche or a turd sandwich. Cartman is for Team Turd, Kyle is a douchebacker, and Stan could not care less. Did you just say that Voting is ridiculous? No, I think voting is great, but if I have to choose between a douche and a turd, I just don't see the point. Although he's pressured by the whole town, not to mention P. Diddy, Stan refuses to vote and is banished as a result. Dad, isn't this a little extreme? Jesus, I guess maybe you'll never understand how important voting is. Goodbye, son. As over-the-top as this sounds, the episode is eerily relatable. 
Even when neither candidate is ideal, both sides of the political spectrum can become aggressive about securing votes. Turd Sandwich brings the hope for change. A vote for Turd Sandwich is a vote for tomorrow. The episode hilariously and honestly explores vote shaming, which has only grown more common in the social media era. Ultimately, Stan casts his ballot, realizing that most elections boil down to a douche or turd. Number 12. Whaling Following a traumatic birthday at an aquarium, Stan becomes committed to saving the whales and dolphins. But hey, at least you still got your t-shirt! The episode revolves around whaling in Japan, which remains a heavily protested practice even to this date. Of course, the episode is also an excuse to take shots at Whale Wars host Paul Watson, whose anti-whaling tactics are depicted as ineffective. You guys ready? Ready? And throw the stinky butter at them! Ha ha, you stink now! Despite this savage roast, Watson was supposedly happy that the episode shined a spotlight on the issue. In the end, the boys steered the Japanese government away from sea life, inspiring them to instead target barnyard animals. Chicken and the cow? Chicken and the cow? Although the episode doesn't offer a realistic solution to whaling, at the very least, it helped bring the subject to the attention of a wider audience, while also bringing the laughs. Number 11. Desensitization to Violence It seems like every week there's another report on the news about an unspeakable act of violence that's taken place. School! I'm sorry, Sharon, I... Why are you all acting like this is normal? What is wrong with you people? Violence has become so prevalent in our modern world that a lot of people shrug these reports off as if there's nothing we can do to prevent further chaos. Sharon is the only adult who's outraged following a catastrophe at school. As everyone else downplays the ongoing mayhem, Sharon feels as if she's surrounded by emotionless pod people. God damn it! Stop acting like there's something wrong with me! Something's wrong with you! Once again, we're left with an ending that doesn't find an easy solution to the problem. Sharon accepts the bleak reality she lives in as the new normal. At the same time, the episode serves as a wake-up call for those who've grown desensitized to violent tragedies. Number 10. Therapy After Stephen finds Butters in a compromising position with Cartman, he jumps to the conclusion that his son is bi-curious. Is that true, son? Are you feeling confused? Yeah, I'm pretty confused, all right. You see? Although it's just a big misunderstanding, Stephen decides to send Butters to a conversion therapy camp. Despite all the talk about being a bi-curious, nobody explains to Butter what this means. In any case, Butters doesn't see why he or any of the other boys at the camp should feel ashamed about it. One kid named Bradley feels so ashamed that he nearly jumps to his demise. After hearing some honest words from Butters, Bradley finds that he's not confused. It's everyone who says he's confused that doesn't understand. By the end, Butters still doesn't entirely comprehend the situation, but he is proud to be himself. Well, Butters, I guess we might as well go home. Looks like you're never gonna change. No, I like being back curious. Well, you know something? So do I. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, now I am confused. Number 9. The Treatment of Amazon Workers Few things are more satisfying than walking out onto your front doorstep to find a new Amazon package. Although it's the ultimate convenience for the consumer, many of the employees responsible for shipping and delivering those packages have expressed dissatisfaction with their working conditions. In this two-parter, an Amazon fulfillment center is set up in South Park. When one worker suffers a particularly bizarre accident, a strike erupts. Go out and die. I believe the working class needs to revolt against capitalism and bring about socioeconomic emancipation. Earlier that year, some called for an Amazon Prime Day boycott, and the Stop Bezos Act was initiated. Please, I'm trying to get everyone back to work. Uh Portraying founder Jeff Bezos as an all-knowing overlord, the episodes also touch upon how the retail giant has overshadowed smaller businesses. Since the fulfillment center opened. Hold on a minute, you all stay here because you want to work? It is. Our purpose. Our purpose. Our purpose. In the end, the episodes demonstrate how instant gratification doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be left fulfilled in the long run. Number 8. ICE Detention Centers Even before U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement was formed in 2003, immigration detention was a major talking point. Opinions surrounding the issue became especially heated with the election of President Donald Trump, whose zero-tolerance policy has resulted in numerous children being separated from their families. So anyone can make an anonymous tip and you can round up families and send them away? 
Nobody told me about this. I thought everything sucked now. Do you have a card? Cartman being, well, Cartman, sees this as ample opportunity to get rid of Kyle. <laughs> That's what should be. You guys take the parents, we'll take the kids. Ice quickly realizes that Kyle sticks out like a sore thumb, and his Jewish heritage doesn't help their image. Yet that doesn't stop them from picking up Cartman later on. Jimmy pissed me off because he told the teacher I was texting in class, so I told Jimmy I'd have him sent to a migrant detention center. He didn't believe me, so I said oh, I already did it to Cal, and Stan heard that and got pissed off and had me sent to a migrant detention center. The episode depicts ICE as an incompetent agency that cares more about saving their own skin than the psychological ramifications detention centers have on children. Mexican Joker, I just want you to remember that I helped you. Jeff Corrigan. Remember, Jeff was your buddy. Now come on, let's go, Mexican Joker! Number 7. Controversial Flags Now more than ever, displaying the Confederate flag is bound to result in a passionate debate. Oh, Jesus Christ, not this again! This isn't anything new, however. Even back in the year 2000, South Park was parodying flag controversy in this episode. Chef insists that the South Park Town flag be changed due to its offensive imagery. How can a black man not be bothered by it? Jimbo, meanwhile, feels that the flag is a part of the town's history and therefore should be preserved. The episode wisely doesn't vilify Chef or Jimbo, exploring the argument from both of their perspectives. In the end, they find a way to make both sides happy. The flag is changed to be more diverse, although it retains elements of the original design. 20 years after this episode aired, people still aren't any closer to reaching a compromise. Number 6. Steroids Steroids? From Stan's stint as a guitar hero to Cartman's fried chicken operation, substance use has been parodied in a number of South Park episodes. One of the most effective examples occurred in Season 8, when Jimmy entered the Special Olympics. To give himself a competitive edge, Jimmy turns to steroids. Look, it's really none of your b b b beeswax, Timmy. Timmy! Timmy! Because I, maybe I don't have what it takes to win without it. Despite Timmy's qualms, Jimmy continually justifies his actions, arguing that most athletes do this sort of thing anyway. Although his performance is enhanced, the steroids take a drastic toll on Jimmy's personality and relationships. South Park may be a comedy, but this episode at certain points gets surprisingly dramatic and downright uncomfortable. Fortunately, Jimmy learns his lesson by the end, thanks to Timmy and, inadvertently, Cartman. Well, guys, I guess now you see what I was up to all along. I dressed up like a handicapped person and lost the Special Olympics on purpose so that Jimmy could learn his lesson about steroids. Number 5. Climate Change Climate change isn't going away overnight, hence why it remains a recurring theme in South Park. Granted, South Park hasn't always taken climate change very seriously, or should we say, serially. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the ones who are actually serial. In a Season 9 episode parodying the response to Hurricane Katrina, shots were also fired at the day after tomorrow and its take on the climate crisis. The following season, Al Gore tries to warn everybody about a creature called Man Bear Pig, an obvious allegory for climate change. Man Bear Pig? It is a creature which roams the Earth alone. It is half man, half bear, and half pig. Although it seems that Man Bear Pig is imaginary, his existence is confirmed by season 22. That's it! That's what I saw! I saw Man Bear Pig. It leaves us with a grim message. The climate emergency is real, it may be too late to reverse the damage, and most people would rather ignore the problem than make a small sacrifice. Number 4. Censorship in China Oh, and then Kenny learned to play bass watching YouTube videos of John Lennon with the Dalai Lama. Oh, 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 yeah, no, no, we don't want to go there. Talking about the Dalai Lama doesn't go over well with the Chinese. The, the, the what? Being such a controversial show, censorship has always provided commentary for South Park. Freedom of speech even led to a war against Canada in the 1999 feature film. While the U.S. and the Great White North have since buried the hatchet, Randy had a bone to pick with China in season 23. Due to China's economic impact on the U.S. entertainment industry, many American companies have played ball with the country's regulations, despite how unusual some of them sound. Fine, I can handle some healthy competition. Who else wants to go to China and get some of their money? Oh, for crying out loud. Winnie the Pooh, for example, was banned in China after Xi Jinping was compared to Disney's interpretation. Some people said Pooh looked like the Chinese p -p -p president, so we're illegal in China now. Jesus, what kind of madhouse is this? It shouldn't come as a surprise that this episode got South Park banned in China. Randy and Towley would have some harsh words for the Chinese government the following week. Wait, wait, Towley, come on, I need you! I'm never working for a company that's regulated by a communist government. Okay, okay. 
No more selling to the Chinese. Number three, immigration. One year after the CBP was formed, South Park delivered a satire of illegal immigration that's still incredibly relevant. The immigrants in this episode travel from a bleak future where the world has become overpopulated and destitute. Hey, Stanley, you need to understand something. Those people from the future have had a hard life. Where they come from is dirty and overpopulated and poor. You can't even imagine the kind of depression they come from. By venturing back to the 21st century, people are able to make enough money to provide for their families in the fourth millennium. Looks as if the job at Wendy's did work for the original immigrant. This second arrivee claims that man's family is now much better off and wishes the same for his family. Modern workers, however, argue that this is taking away their jobs, or gerbs, as some might say. They took our jobs! As funny as the episode is, it's also harrowing to think that so little has changed since 2004. For all we know, this could still be a serious issue by the time we get to 3045. After all, satire may be our greatest window into the future. Number 2. COVID-19 It was only a matter of time before South Park covered the coronavirus, and they did not hold back. Thomas opened a restaurant in Soda Sopa. Doesn't, Doesn't seem, seem like, like such a good, good idea, idea now, now, does it, Turner? The show's first ever television special, The Pandemic Special, covered a lot of ground, from COVID-19's effect on small businesses to the dilemmas it's caused with reopening schools. However, since it is South Park, it also takes time to ridicule the situation as a whole, poking fun at the habits we've adopted since the pandemic's inception. Yeah, that's good social distancing. Real good. A vaccination special also followed focusing on society's obsession with getting vaccinated against COVID-19. Naturally, this drives the citizens of South Park mad, and their dilemma is cleverly compared to a situation that many are all too familiar with. Oh, uh, hey, uh, we'd like to get in there and get some vaccinations, okay? Are you on the list? Well, no, I'm not on the list. I tried to get on the list. I sat on my computer 30 nights in a row trying to make a vaccination appointment and get on the goddamn list. On the other hand, the seniors take full advantage. Everyone clear out of the way. Clear the entrance. We have VIPs coming out. We're to next, everybody. That was our second shot. Let's go to the bar. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Michael Richards Controversy When Randy gets an answer incredibly wrong on Wheel of Fortune, his mistake follows him everywhere. Even after literally kissing up to Jesse Jackson, the only people who sympathize with Randy are Michael Richards, Mark Furman, and several others who came to regret their choice of words. We've been following your story since we first saw it on the news. Don't worry. You're with friends now. While Randy's storyline provides clever commentary, the episode's most poignant dynamic is between Stan and Token. Although Stan wishes to reconcile, Token isn't so quick to forgive. He feels that Stan doesn't understand what hearing a certain word means to him. Jesse Jackson is not the emperor of black people! Token's line about Jesse Jackson actually came from Vernon Chapman, a staff writer who's half black. It isn't until Stan realizes that he can never understand how Token feels that he finally begins to grasp the situation. I've been trying to say that I understand how you feel, but I'll never understand. I'll never really get how it feels for a black person to have somebody use the N-word. I don't get it. Now you get it, Stan. Yeah, I totally don't get it. Thanks, dude. Has a South Park story ever given you pause to think about something serious? Give us the details in the comments below. Oh, jeez. Maybe we let this thing get out of hand. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.